Welcome back to DXB today, where we've got ourselves a bit of a, a beauty special here, a deep dive into the industry uh, of beauty and, of course, with Beauty World having been in town. So uh, time now to introduce our next guest, uh, no stranger to the TV cameras, Uma Ghosh, a holistic beauty educator and entrepreneur joining us live here on the sofa. Uma, thanks very much indeed for being with us. Thank you for having me. Exciting. I'm looking forward to this chat, you know, because <laughs> we want to get into all things face yoga. But can we deal with the sort of the big words first? Because sure. we've got phrases aplenty that need to be sort of broken down and explained. Absolutely. Holistic beauty modalities. Right. Explain. So, Holistic beauty is basically looking within, not just how you look, but how you feel about yourself. And beauty on the whole, because anything that's happening on your skin is a reflection of what is going on inside of your body. That means your gut health, um, your the function of your organs, as well as your emotional health. Everything shows up on your face and on your skin, because skin is the largest organ at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So face yoga is one of the modalities of holistic beauty. We have so many of them, face massage, face yoga, anything to do with gua sha. Um, we do cupping, we do facial reflexology, facial acupuncture. All of these are a part of holistic beauty modalities, plus focusing on what you eat, what you think, and how you live your daily life, because everything shows up in some way or the other, the way you present yourself to the world. And that's why my academy's name is Pro Age Aesthetics Academy, because anything that's anti-aging is, I feel, is against aging. And we are all aging, mm. right? And when you call anything anti-aging, you're denying everything that comes with age, your wisdom, your experience, your children, your, you know, everything that we gain with age. So. Right here. <laughs> Absolutely, right. anything. I, I just turned 50 last month and I feel like I've, I've been, I, I feel the best that I've ever felt. Mm. Happy birthday, Uma. Thank you and same to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Uma, I, I mean, I have to agree with that approach. Mm. I think it's also from my kind of like Indian cultural background where this is kind of ingrained in us from mm. the very, very beginning. For those that are, you know, perking their ears up when they hear this holistic approach, mm. where is kind of like the best place to start for them? You know, you need to understand what really happens when we're aging. So first and foremost, why I say everything shows up on your uh, on your face is when your, your body is not functioning well. That means the blood circulation is not really going on well. Um, your skin is not behaving the way it should behave because it's not getting the nutrition that it should be getting. So first thing and for the most important thing is to really look into what is going inside your system. That means the food that you're eating, you know, how much hydration you have in your food, all of those things. But the first thing yeah, to answer your question, start with something that will increase the blood circulation. That could be any modality, face yoga, face massage, or anything to do with any tool that you get so many different tools, which comes from Ayurveda, there's so many comes from Chinese medicine. Start wherever, whatever you connect with, doesn't matter. But anything that'll help you increase blood circulation, work with facial muscles, you're going to show something on fitness for the body, what do we really do for our face? Mm. We have the facial muscles too, more than 40 of them. Can I ask a question? Um, do you talk to children about this or teenagers or what sort of Absolutely. age would you encourage us to think about for our kids? Such a good question because um, especially if you have a daughter, I know you do and yes. it's our responsibility really to give them a very positive perception of beauty, especially in today's day and age. They are, our generation competed actually didn't really compete with filters the way this generation is. And so it's such a good question because that's the right time to start education, mm. anything to do with beauty, not just holistic beauty, because it's the perception that they have about themselves is what beauty is for them, right? Mm -hmm. And beauty is one of those things that was never defined by us. That was the definition that was given to us by society, our caretaker, our parents. We were never given an opportunity to define beauty for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I think, yes, we do. I, I love teaching young girls okay. to really start having small rituals around their beauty, not just having applying creams, but really looking at beauty from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. 
Uma, I've known you for so many years and there couldn't be a better ambassador for holistic beauty than you. As you mentioned, you, you turned 50 not that long ago. You've done it all when you were much younger. You've done beauty pageants, you've, you were a television presenter to what you're doing today. And when I'm scrolling through my Instagram feed, I sometimes watch your face yoga videos and I think to myself, gosh, it's, it's a pain for me just to go to the gym and do my regular workout. I to know. spend 25 minutes a day with face yoga seems quite it feels like a little Absolutely, too much. So yeah. how can we still manage to incorporate this in our daily lifestyle without it taking up too much time? Fabulous <laughs> question. And we all struggle with that, right? Because we all have busy lives. And that's why I don't like to call it a routine because as human brains, anything that's a routine, it's something that we have to do. I like to call it a beauty ritual because when you start something with that positive perspective and you don't have to do it for 25 minutes start with five minutes when you start feeling good and you start to see the results you will continue doing it and so start with two to three minutes five minutes of anything face yoga face massage and then you see the difference and you will be encouraged to start you know continue and start fit into your daily life, your lifestyle and everyone's lifestyle is different. The way you fit in physical workout into your schedule, you could definitely do something to do with beauty in it. Doesn't have to be every day, it could be three days in a week, but something that you can be consistent with will definitely show positive results and that will encourage you to continue doing it. Okay, I know that with body workout, there are things you can do wrong. Uh, with face workout, I don't know if it's the same, but can you please show us, we have about 30 sure. seconds, if you can show us a quick face workout, we'll all be very, right. very happy. Let's do that. So. Let's keep both our hands. Everything is to do with breathing actually in face yoga and face massage, but you know, we start with breath work and we start with lymphatic drainage. But since we have only 30 seconds, let's keep our uh, hands on the you know, heart chakra as we call it, or just on your chest. On that one. Okay, and just let's do breathe in and breathe out deeply. And breathe out. And now look up towards the ceiling, stretch your neck and kiss the ceiling. Huh? Can you feel the stretch on your neck? Mm. Keep it there for 10, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then come back. And then turn on your right and do the same thing. Kiss and release. And turn towards your left. Kiss and release for three times. Come. I can't Can it help? Okay. I'll take this seriously. <laughs> and then come towards your center and now let's do some face facial exercises the big o that, that we call in face yoga so just make a big o and stay there for 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and then just smile on the side with that o so you go like oh huh try to smile with that o Wow. <laughs> Cover your teeth with your upper lip and lower lip, yes. And now can you move your cheeks? These are the big muscles we have, we call it zygomatic. So. <laughs> Why is everyone looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Uma, unfortunately, we've run short of time. Oh For the rest Maybe. of the face yoga workouts, make sure you yes, check come. out Uma on her Instagram. It was and such YouTube, a pleasure yeah. seeing you. And YouTube, yes, of course. Thank you so much. And Thank keep you. doing everything that you're doing. And you definitely are my icon when it comes to aging gracefully. Thank you. So Thank much. you. Thank you so much. You guys are doing job and thank you for having me thank you right now Ahmed went to check out the leading expert in laser treatments offering laser facial services for men and women this is skin laundry in recent years there has been a growing shift in the societal perception of masculinity with more and more men getting into skincare and self-care routines <laughs> I am joined now with Fatima. Thank you very much for joining us on the show today. Thank you for having me. So Skin Laundry, can you please tell us more about the brand? So Skin Laundry, it's a laser and skincare company from California. We provide an advanced technology of laser facials by our DHA licensed nurses and doctors. Why do you think there is a growing market for male skincare? So men these days are willing to take more care of themselves. They want to look good, be more confident. 
of their skin and the way they look like because skincare is not exclusively for women. And do you think there is a growing number of male clientele that you guys are getting here in the clinic? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we have a growing number of uh, male clients here. Almost like 30% of our clients are men. They are on memberships. They usually come regularly for their treatments. And they love the treatments because there is a very effective, quick treatment with zero downtime. Do you think there is a difference between male and female skincare? Actually, there is no difference between male and female skincare. Skincare is for everyone. But here at Skin Laundry, we address the skincare according, uh, individually according to the skin concerns. But for men, I think they might go for more active ingredients like glycolic acid, which, might, which might, will mildly exfoliate their skin, reduce the excessive uh, oil production because they tend to have thick skin, more open pores. And I think a hyaluronic acid also for hydration as they usually shave, so they need more moisturizer for their skin. And now we're getting to the fun part. Looking at my skin, what do you think I need? So you have a nice skin actually, so we might go for the signature laser just to deeply cleanse your skin, stimulate your collagen and give you the glow. Great, thank you. I can't wait to start my treatment. As you can see, my skin is clearer and the pores are tighter. And we've learned today that skincare isn't just for women. Men are also adapting it into their daily skincare routine. And as they say in skin laundry, good skin, days ahead. I think Ahmed enjoyed that a little too much. Tom, yes. does that sound like something you would do? Sure. <laughs> Sign me up. We'll take that as a yes. Uh, but for now, it is time for the roundup. Ash, what have we got today? Thank you for asking Nimi. Now, new AR beauty ads by Google revolutionizes the way consumers shop for lip and eye products. This new ad format utilizes augmented reality to allow brands to promote lip and eye products through interactive virtual try-on experiences. Um, I'll tell you how I feel about this a little mm. bit later on, but Nimi, what is your online shopping experience when it comes to beauty products? Is this something that you would be keen to try? Well, I actually, my online version is seeing influencers try it themselves. Yeah. So I compare myself if they have a similar skin tone to me, you know, if that would work for me well. With the whole AR thing, I don't think I would trust it. I would have to go into the shop, mm -hmm. try it myself, because these products aren't cheap either. So yeah. I don't want to get it wrong. Yeah, I agree with you. I, in fact, have almost exactly the same approach towards this. I like to watch a good old fashioned YouTube tutorial, hopefully one that's not 15, 20 minutes long, <laughs> but hopefully some something that is but two to five minutes long and see how the product looks on their skin and especially if I'm buying a product which is based on color so if it's a lipstick or a certain shade of foundation like you said I try and find uh, vloggers who have similar complexion as mine and then see how it looks on them what about you Dr Victoria what is your take on this um, similar again, I'd prefer to see someone with a similar skin tone to me and probably read read what their review was. I read a lot of beauty reviews, a lot of beauty journalists I follow. I have been on a couple of websites who do use the um, augmented AI technique for lipsticks. I've never actually purchased anything after trying it. I don't know if I trust it 100%, although I'm sure AI has you know amazing um, capabilities. Um, I probably still veer towards following people that I trust though. Mm. Yeah. We spoke a little earlier on about the, the evolution and the understanding of, of, of your school of expertise as well. How, how much of a role is tech playing in that at the moment? It's playing a massive role in the skin cancer field. Mm. So there's a lot of research going into um, AI and skin cancer detection. Really? Um, so there's been a big study which sort of tested a computer versus dermatologist and they came out equal for diagnosing wow. skin cancer. No doubt at some point the, the AI will actually take over and become better diagnostic um, doctors than us. Um, but I think there still will be a role for doctors. I'm hopefully. sure there will yeah. always be a role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But hopefully, uh, even for TV presenters as well. You know. <laughs> uh, listen, thanks very much indeed. You're going to stick with us for a little bit longer. Uh, this is our beauty special here on DXB today, and this is still what's still coming up. Coming up on the show, our very own Amy's exclusive interview with Salama Mohammed, the founder of Peaceful. 
Yeah, all that and more. Plus, we have got the founder of Sante Skin in the studio sharing the secrets of Ayurvedic beauty rituals. And I'm going to share some of my favorite exercises before the end of the night. So don't go anywhere.